Hello, and thank you for watching another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, obviously, all you guys that uh, watch my channel already know who I am, but uh, my name's Todd, and I repair amplifiers for a living. Yes, I sit in this chair for a living five days a week, sometimes six. Uh, but yeah, today, today I want to go over something that is almost a pet peeve of mine. Um, it's when people try to attempt to repair amplifiers from the top. Why? Why? Why not take the additional five minutes? I don't even think I don't even think it takes five minutes, depending on what size board, of course, you're working on. But like a board like this, literally takes five minutes for me to pull it out of the heatsink. Now, why do I? Why am I complaining about this one today? Um, you know, I absolutely, I support people 100% in um, trying to learn and understand amplifier repair. 100% I back you guys. That's my job here to make content for you is to help you make choices and decisions that will help to keep you from pulling your hair out and going bald or turning gray. Um, everything I have learned in life, I have learned on my own. I have some college education, but um, a majority of my electronics education is my own teachings. So uh, from a very, very, very early age, back in the early 80s. So I got this amplifier in um, and I pulled the back cover off. And the first thing I noticed is somebody had already worked on this. I mean blatantly obvious because it had no power supply transistors and missing a set of output transistors. Um, they had cut the legs off the originals and looked like they had tried soldering two new transistors on the end here and they did some, I think it looked like they did some work at the power supply. Look, there's old flux floating around here. But I'm assuming they popped it because it came in with no power, it came in with no transistors. Now, if they would have taken taken the five minutes to pull this board, they would have found out why this amplifier, why the power supply failed when they put it back together. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, it could have been an original fault um, that they... They could have just pulled the transistors and realized that it's beyond their beyond their capabilities, but I don't think so. Why would they solder two transistors on the outputs here? Yeah, and there was flux up here around the uh, transistor vias. I think they were replaced. They were fired back up and it popped again. Um, so. You know, nothing against the guy that was doing the work, but if they would have pulled the board, sorry for all the exterior and outside noises, um, but if they would have pulled the board, they would have found out why it didn't, why their repair didn't work. So, on the bottom side, and this is the same case or situation for a lot of the big Korean, um, like the big 8K plus amplifiers the power supplies where the power supply goes down and you're gonna have a drain trace um, on the top of the PCB right where the via is and it'll burn right there it'll it'll actually open up that via to the trace and then you lose your drain that's on the top side of the board well in this situation the drain trace is on the bottom side of the board and what's one of the rule, common rules um, when it comes to repairing your power supplies? Phones. Um, when you notice you have oddball heating of transistors, the number one thing I always check, I always go back to is looking to make sure that your drain traces are not open. And I can tell you right now, I mean, I wish I could show you guys a little, like, a little closer. You can just maybe see it right here, right there, right there, right there, and right there. All these drains right here, 
that drain, that drain, that drain, and that drain is open. Uh, that one got hot but didn't open. That got hot but didn't open. This one is open. This one is open. And this one is open. If they would have found, if they would have pulled the board, flipped the board over, they would have seen that they were missing their drains and they probably would have had a successful repair if the Zener diodes, sorry for my slowest ever focusing camera, um, that's if the diodes here, the Zener diodes are okay. These are 15 volt Zener diodes. A lot of times when you lose an output on one of these multi-channel 2092 amps, a lot of times you'll lose the Zener diode there. Uh, pretty standard to replace the output transistors, the Zener diodes, and the driver IC. Those are pretty standard components to replace when you lose a channel. And in my opinion, guys, these are overdriven. They're pushed too hard. Um, not by you guys, but by how they're designed. The, um, I think they just drive these as by the 4227. Hold on, let me get some info. Yep. 4227. Um, they drive these things frequency wise pretty hard. That's why at an idle you'll see that these will actually warm up. I don't believe I don't believe that that's the way it should be. I think it should go back to the engineers. Um, I think this design should go back to the engineers, have them go in and modify the dead time or not modify but adjust the dead time to the characteristics of the output circuit um, so yeah do I see a lot of issues with these multi-channel class D 2092 amps yes I do I, I see a lot of issues uh, so but yeah I, that's really what I wanted just to point out today is guys don't take shortcuts I never ever do I never do work from the top in the heat sink um, I know a lot of people that will they'll take the amp they'll heat up the parts pull the old part out stick the new part in and solder it from the top but you never know really what's going on on the bottom a lot of today's amps will have circuitry and ICs and everything on the bottom so you just never know pull your boards take the time pull your boards and do the repairs correctly um, to avoid failures or causing more damage than what needs to you know be there I think the second time this got powered back up it took out some gate resistors pretty harsh here and burnt the PC PCB up just a little bit not too bad but enough to uh, have to get rid of the carbon so pull the ports guys you know it's these are these are easy to fix so now uh, just pay attention to the things that can and can that can go wrong because um, if you look up top here there is no no trace there's no trace at the drain because the trace is on the bottom side of the board and the drain more often than not is what gets popped open on a severe power supply fault check your drains guys check your drains if you have odd heating of transistors if you have a parallel bank of transistors and you have one or two heating up in that bank check the drain especially if all you know that those transistors are matched um, there should never be really oddball heating if there is it's because something is not being driven right within that transistor um, so that's really what I wanted to go over with you guys today if you have any questions uh, or comments uh, leave them down below for me I love to help you guys I love to uh, share what I find um, um, oh, and to point out, I love, absolutely love how these guys are driving these. That's pretty cool. Using the 600, 631s here to uh, drive a couple 3205s. Yeah, that's thumbs up to me, guys. Um, yeah, none of that small puny SMD stuff. So, uh, great amps. Um, Ruthless Audio, I know. Yep, this is Ben's amps. I, I, I have nothing but good things to say about him. I love working for the guy. So, uh, thanks guys for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them down below. I'm here for you. We'll catch you on the next one.